So today we're on the trip through the Blue Mountains and our first stop was to see a performance of traditional and cultural dancing by Aboriginals, which was kind of interesting. And they showed us how they play the Diggeradoo. Diggeradoo. I never say it right. Diggeradoo. Well, it's a Diggeradoo. Look it up on the internet. Anyways, now we're just walking down here and to this, I guess it's a gorge. And apparently the reason the Blue Mountains are called the Blue Mountains is because they have a blue glow to them when the uh, sun evaporates um, the moisture that's in eucalyptus and it creates sort of this blue haze. This formation is known as the Three Sisters. Okay, so here we are standing in line to get on this uh, cable car that holds about 86 people at Scenic World. And we've been standing here for a while. Oh, that's the best response I've had so far. It's only downhill from here. Well, literally, because we sort of go down a little bit and then we'll go back up again, but no, that's being spectacular. To the right, guys, Katuba Falls. To the left, your beautiful Jamison Valley. The glass is already clear. So look on down, guys. We can see 270 meters to the valley below. Hold on time if you think it helps. There we go. Uh, we're going to go on song with wonder of all the sights around you, hey? No respect, man. To the right, Katoomba Falls. 244 meters, that waterfall. Now you see there's a whole bunch of backpackers out. They do like to jump the fence and wade into that water there. Now this water actually flows through the canyon and ends up in Warragamba Dam, which is part of Sydney's drinking water supply. So you folks wondering why Sydney's water tastes a little bit like backpackers' feet. Yeah. That's the reason why over there. No, one well, lady like that joke, fair enough. You guys are serious tourists, no time for humour. <laughs> Let's get back to it. Seven o'clock on our left, we have the Three Sisters. Three Sisters there. Now, if you're a child of millennial age, you have no idea what seven o'clock is. Oh, I'll just look around, you'll see three sharp spires. Bingo, you found it. You can work 12 of an analog watch now. Oh God, there's so many cameras going. Ooh, it's getting hot. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. It'll be $10, sir, okay? <laughs> That's alright. To the left, you can see Orphan Rock there, guys. The hand railing's on top there. It actually stairs on the right. You've got to walk up the top of that feature there. But it was closed in 1974. It'd be too dangerous. Now, there's even a couple of weddings up there, I believe, before closure. So let's hope the old honeymoons weren't too short. Yep, that's all the laugh that joke deserves. You got the spot on there. Good work. Okay. This is the Incline Railroad, and it goes down at about a 52 degree angle. All right, family friends. If you're still on the platform, if you're on the left hand side of the train, we've got Duncan's going to sit you in your rows, and you'll be on the train very shortly. Six or seven minutes. Now, if you're on the train, We've got photo team, they're coming to take some nice photos of you. They'll scan your wristband, you can have a look at these when you get back up top. See if you look cool there the train.
the bottom of the cable line. If you wish to return on the train, you'll have to exit and line back up again. So now we're walking along the uh, boardwalk. This supposedly takes us to the next cable car to go back up. You know, lots of trees, rainforest like, but really not a lot to see that we haven't seen before. Now there are other trails that rock off that go off from this that you can take as well. A little longer walks. They talk about up to an hour, and some of them were on the 10-minute one. So heading our way to the cable car. And now we're getting on to the third one. This cable car will take us back up to the top. We heard you that time. Alrighty. So my name's Hayden, taking us back up to Scenic World. Point out a few cool things along the way. Alrighty, starting with Katoomba Falls. Katoomba Pop Pop. Alrighty, so just up this way. So Katoomba Falls, which is our yeah, second yeah. highest waterfall here in the mountains, total height of 244 metres. Now around about 100,000 litres of water flows down there every hour, eventually ends up in Warragamba Dam, which is Sydney's main drinking water source. Now to the left of Katoomba Falls, we do have Orphan Rock, that large sandstone pillar there. Formerly the most popular lookout in the mountains, however, it was closed in the 1970s. Hey, guys, can you please start Alrighty, on our right hand side, the three sisters. Come on, go down here, the Alrighty, so popular bridge in between the taller sister and the cliff. You can just see it from here. So that's known as Honeymoon Bridge, it's just a short 10 minute walk from Echo Point. Also, a popular staircase running on the other side of the sisters. It's known as a giant stairway. Around about 900 steep steps takes it down into the Jamison Valley, around about the same height where we were down the bottom there. <laughs> now looking out the back we can see Mount Solitary out there in the distance, that large sandstone mountain. Around about six kilometers from where we are now. You can walk out there. Three hour walk one way. Alright everyone, passing off and rock on our right. You can also see two large holes that were eroded away in the centre of it, made it unstable. How can it fall like this? All right, everyone, bit of a swing here. Hold on if you think it helps. All right, if everyone's curious to see this uh, tracks, white tracks run around Scenic World, that was actually that actually used to be a roller coaster. All right, so it was built in the 80s, known as the Orphan Rocker never open to the public. Now they built it expecting so you know massive crowds and then they're kind of like all right cool. So this is at the top of this scenic world uh, spot which I haven't really come to the conclusion yet whether it is really worth the money if you take it on a tour or whatever. It basically consists of about three kinds of rides which I've already mentioned and uh, yeah there's a lot of scenery you see the blue mountains up here you see forest and whatnot but you know that's good for the first five or ten minutes and then well you've seen it apparently this is called the outback oh yeah we got a beef with gray line about their uh, lunch thing too that we paid 46 dollars for we were told we could go to the cafeteria and order whatever we wanted up to 23 dollars and the guy told us it was nothing really over 23 dollars we walked in and um, we see a sign that says Grey Line pick up lunch here. So we went over and asked the, the girl about that. Said, well, aren't we able to go to uh, the cafeteria, to the cafe counter? And she says, oh no, she says, that's not during busy times. And so we were handed a bottle of water each, uh, a chicken wrap that was dried out, uh, that just had like some kind of dried up chicken in it. and. Uh, some cheese and crackers or something and a cookie or you could have had an apple as well with it don't really think that was $23 worth a person so um, I'm not done with the gray line yet I'm going to speak to our bus driver about it first find out what's going on there and then I'm gonna ask who I have to go and complain to